Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about extinction events. An actually very specific extinction event that you're probably all familiar with. The event known as the Cretaceous Paleogene Extinction Event, also known as KPG event, that was responsible for bringing the mice to the dinosaurs. Although not all dinosaurs, some dinosaurs ended up turning into birds over time. And also you can check out more about this in one of the previous videos that's going to be popping up somewhere right there at some point in the future. And so anyway, because this particular event is associated with dinosaurs, I'm going to be using a lot of visual imagery to kind of represent all of this. So even though this event is already pretty well known and pretty well studied, we're still constantly discovering new things about it. And specifically new things in regards to what really caused the animals in this case and a lot of different plants and a lot of different types of life to go extinct in such a short period of time. And even though in a typical textbook, if you were to read about this, you're just going to hear about the asteroids smacking into planet Earth and essentially causing a tremendous amount of damage on the surface while also causing a major shift in climate, a lot of this is somewhat simplified. And the more studies come out, the more we realize that the actual picture is way, way more complex. And so first of all, it's important to realize that around this time, approximately 66 million years ago, several things happened one after another. It wasn't actually just one single event. And because of this, a lot of scientists have been sort of arguing about which of these events was mostly responsible for the extinction. But looks like all of them were. As a matter of fact, it looks like the actual extinction event which can actually be visualized on this beautiful graph right here and happen around this time, just like the previous extinction events, was a very complex combination of different factors, but just happening all at once. Another way of looking at this is, well, taking a look at the moon, for example. Just based on what we see on the surface of the moon, we know that our planet Earth received just as many collisions, but only some of them resulted in major extinction events with this one here naturally being one of the biggest ones. And so trying to identify the exact factors and possibly the exact timeline of these events is really important in helping us understand, well, first of all, if we want to actually find a way to avoid this in the future, but also in trying to understand how life tends to evolve and tends to adapt to these conditions. And so let's start with the facts. We know that at least three different events happened around a similar time frame. It wasn't just one single collision, which is of course the famous one with the crater located in uh, Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. But it was very likely at least three different things that happened around the same time. And so we know this happened, but we also know that there was another impact with the impact crater approximately three times smaller that was on almost the opposite side of the planet. It was located and still is located in Ukraine. It's located in the region right here and it's known as the Boltish Crater. And because the crater here is about three times smaller and was naturally created by a much smaller rock, at first it was assumed that it came from the same object that fell apart and basically smacked in two different places, but later on it was discovered that the actual crater also had a bit of an age difference. At the same time, in an entirely different part of the world, in India, something else was brewing as well. Now this was also around the same time, although the actual timeline is still not entirely clear. This was one of the biggest volcanoes ever or more technically it's known as the Large Igneous Province, where essentially a tremendously large area of land suddenly becomes a permanent volcanic province. And the one we're talking about is this right here, this large purple dot. Now you can obviously see that there are some larger ones like the one in Siberia or the one located around Iceland, but despite the smaller size, it was still extremely powerful. Very powerful to the point where it very likely changed the entire climate of the planet for a very long time. This region, by the way, is known as the Deccan Traps, with the word traps here meaning the igneous provinces that create a kind of a stair-like formation. And so along with the Deccan Traps happening in India, we had the impact in Ukraine, and we had another impact in Mexico. And so one of the bigger questions for the last few decades was trying to figure out if these events were in any way connected. Did, for example, the tremendously powerful impact from the asteroid that landed in Mexico somehow start the formation of volcanoes in India. Now, at the moment, the answer to that seems to be not likely, mostly because of the differences in actual ages and the actual timelines. However, by studying a lot of different samples from various regions around the planet, and by looking at a lot of evidence presented in both craters and, of course, the Indian uh, Deccan traps, 
it's now sort of becoming more and more clear about what actually happened and how this extinction event very likely occurred. All three events were completely independent of one another. It's very likely that the volcanic eruptions started first, but they lasted for approximately 30,000 years. And during that time, the emissions from the volcanoes started to slowly change the climate of the planet, but not to the point of the actual extinction event just yet. Then, while the volcanoes were already erupting in India, on the other side of the planet, the Earth experienced this tremendously powerful impact from an asteroid that was about 7 kilometers in radius. This created a huge amount of debris, but it also hit a very specific part of the planet. It hit a part that was already rich in a lot of different sediments and a lot of various organic compounds and what we would actually refer to as fossils. This of course released a tremendous amount of carbon dioxide and a lot of other gases into the atmosphere almost instantly, resulting in the not so fun times for a lot of different creatures on the planet and also causing a lot of other problems including wildfires, including tsunamis and so on. But all of this was not ended just yet. As the life started to slowly recover, which according to the scientists in a lot of different papers takes anywhere from 2000 to about 5000 years, suddenly we had another impact in a completely different region. The impact from a slightly smaller but also quite powerful rock in Ukraine. And following this third major event, that's when a lot of life finally called it quits. The majority of dinosaurs disappeared, a lot of other life such as for example various aquatic reptiles disappeared as well. And it took a long while for the planet to recover all of this complexity and all of the variety of life that used to exist here. And to some extent this paper does a pretty good job of trying to establish the facts. Now first of all the actual time difference between two impacts is quite large, it's about 500,000 years. But what this graph right here shows us is that this event very likely basically sealed the deal. Even though the volcanism was still going on and even though the original impact has already decimated a large amount of life on the planet, some life here was still surviving, but following this impact, a lot of things suddenly disappeared. While at the same time, right after this event, a major and a very dramatic change in temperature, the so-called hyperthermal event, dramatically raised the average temperatures on the planet and shifted the climate even more once again. And a lot of this analysis was essentially done by looking at various samples in this region and looking at sediments that happened before the impact, looking at the sediments right after the impact, and also the sediments a few thousand years after the final impact as well. With all of the evidence pointing at the fact that it was a combination of all of these events happening around the same time. Or I guess another way of looking at this is that our planet got somewhat unlucky. One major event was followed by another major event, and then was finished by a third slightly smaller event, all within the same time frame. Which of course also helps us understand these extinction events a little bit better. It's very likely that many of these great extinction events were actually very similar. It was a combination of smaller events happening around the same time frame. Now obviously this is just a hypothesis and not an actual theory just yet, but it does make a lot of sense. And it makes even more sense if we actually think about what's happening to our planet right now. Right now the effects we're having on the planet and a lot of things that are happening to our planet are still sort of can be seen as a small extinction event. But if suddenly something else major starts to occur on our planet as well, independent of our own activity, or possibly some other things start to cause climate change as well, in that particular case, the life on our planet might be in peril once again. At the same time, a study like this helps us understand that even a relatively small impact event can actually disrupt the recovery of the planet completely. Which of course suggests that a smaller cosmic event can turn a very small extinction event into a great extinction event. And in more relative terms, for example, a volcanic eruption. If suddenly there is a major volcanic eruption on our planet, we sort of might be in trouble. But that's of course something we'll discuss in some of the future videos. For now, the important findings from this study is really in regards to the great extinction event in general. It looks like, at least for this one, it was actually a combination of smaller events happening, unfortunately, around the same time. And this really triggered a major extinction and a dramatic shift of climate on the planet. The planet has actually changed so much since then. But that's also something I'll discuss in one of the future videos, because we've learned so much how the planet transformed since then as well. But on that note, well, that's pretty much it, and that's all I wanted to mention. Check out the study in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. 
Maybe support the channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.